Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This beast behind me is my boom lift that I got for a great price. And uh, I've had several things I needed to fix, but last time I was using it, I had a major issue. The main hydraulic boom cylinder started spewing hydraulic fluid all over the place. So that needs to be removed and rebuilt. And that is gonna be no small task just to get it off. Don't know if I'm gonna be the one rebuilding it or not. Let's get it off of there and get it to where I can at least have a look at it. I may end up bringing this to a hydraulic shop because it's just so big. I don't have tools to work on an eight inch cylinder. I can't even lift this thing up. Uh, this thing is gonna be a serious beast. Let's see if we can get it off of here first. And that's gonna take some doing. So there is the cylinder right there. Now the boom is sitting down on the ground. I'm gonna need that boom to come up. And of course the cylinder is spewing fl fluid everywhere. So I can't use it to do that. My plan is to come in here with my tractor, lift this up. And then at that point, the front of the hydraulic cylinder should be loose. Then I need to get the other end out and then I need to lift it out of there. So a lot that needs to happen here. I've got the keepers off of this pin. There was just a washer bolted on there so that the pin can't go in and same thing on the other side. So now I need to drive that out without screwing the pin up too much. First question I have is, is it even gonna move? I've got a brass hammer here, let's see what happens. Did it move? It might've moved a tiny bit. Yeah, I think it did. So I think what I need, I need to be able to bolt something to that that is in the center so I can wail on it with a sledgehammer and not mushroom out the pin. Yeah, let me run up to the shop and see what I can come up with. Okay, here's my plan. I've got this little piece of scrap here. The pin already has threads in it. This is gonna fit those threads. And I'm gonna drill down off center because the hole's not in the center so that the plug will be roughly in the center. You know, I can rotate it to get it as centered as I can. And then I'm gonna countersink the bolt so that I'm not hitting the bolt and the threads, but I'm hitting the end of this, which will be over the center of the pin and I can wail on it with a sledgehammer and not damage anything. Let's see how this works. All right, so hopefully this is gonna work. Look at that. All right, can I jam this sucker out of here? Got it out of good ways. Before I take that pin all the way out, I need to support the cylinder. moving slowly. It's going, slowly but surely. Getting tired, I'm gonna miss. And that's gonna hurt. It's just about to stop too. Well, this just goes to show you, there can be some serious consequences from blowing a seal. I don't recommend doing it. <laughs> Looks like maybe two more inches. So this thing sat overnight and with that leak in there, I didn't think it was gonna be holding any pressure, but obviously it still was a little bit. I was careful not to get pinched under it. And I knew the other end was on the ground so it wouldn't move much, but it did move more than I expected. There she is, that little guy. It's a two and a half inch pin. 
didn't even look like I tore it up. So I think you see the plan. I want to pick that boom up. Hopefully my tractor is going to be able to do that. I'm hoping that there's not, there might be another safety mechanism that's going to prevent this boom from wanting to move, even though I have the cylinder disconnected. Now well, let's give it a try. We'll see what happens. Lifting the back of the tractor up, I'm facing downhill a little bit. I'm going to have to put the backhoe on there as a counterweight because I can't even really begin to pull on it. This cylinder right here is the only other one attached to the... And I'm not sure exactly what it does. I think it's part of the safety system. Um, it's obviously not really contributing to the lift. I disconnected it. It had this pin going through right there and I drove it back out. The main cylinder right here is not connected either. The only thing connecting it is this main pin. That's a three inch pin. Other than that, it's free to pivot up and down and it's just sitting on the front over there. So let's see if the tractor can pick it up. Like my tractor, it's strong. Got a post right there. Too sketchy. That's a bit sketchy, I agree. Thing is, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna keep that there the entire time I'm working on it. So if anything happens to this, I have a backup. And that can lift it, so that's a good backup. This is only holding up like 2,000 pounds. That is easily within its strength. You know, you can take a post like that and you can post drive it into the ground and it will take all that force. So really, this is nothing. It has those bolts up there at the top that are going to prevent it from sliding out. And then also keep in mind that this thing is not free to rotate. The spin mechanism on that is locked and will remain locked. So the only thing this boom can do is go down. It can't go left and right. So it looks sketchy, but I think it's actually not that bad. There you can see that cylinder shifted so it was going to fight me lifting that thing i'm glad i disconnected it next thing i'm going to do fully retract that cylinder i've got it ratchet strapped and then i've also got a backup on it i'm going to use the auxiliary power to retract that it's annoying not being able to see the cylinder while i'm at the controls retracting it looking at the footage it might have been a good idea to try to get a bucket underneath although there's not much room under there i'm not sure how effective that would be but i'm using rags to soak up all the oil it's still moving Man, that thing's making a mess. There, that sounded like the end. Is there going to be enough room to get by that? It's going to be really close. It almost looks like my boom needed to be just a touch higher. Have that cylinder just barely won't clear there so that I can drop it down. I need to lift the boom up just a tiny bit more. So I brought another pole. I don't really like how sketchy it is anyway, so having a second pole is fine with me. I feel really good about that now. It's at a good height and that's not going anywhere. That cylinder is now clearing, so I can lower that down. What you doing, pups? You gonna help me fix it? Are you here to help? It's good, because I need some help. Can you, um, can you grab that cylinder out of there for me? 
Come on, Betsy, you can do it. Betsy, you can do it. Yeah, not so much. How about you, Riley? Because, man, I'm chewing on a stick. <laughs> All right, now I got to get that other pin out of there. And access to it is not easy. The other side is in the engine compartment. Um, it's not bad. That is the pin that's welded on, and this is what retains it in place. So it's going to have to be driven this way from the other side. In this direction. So there is the other end of that. You see it? It's this back area down here behind this hydraulic hose. There you can see the pin. This is in the way. This is in the way. There's just not much to, to go on there. But I may have an idea. So again, it's right back there. You can see I actually have a straight shot to it right now. I ran up to the wood shop and I made this V-shaped board. And that fits right here. It kind of wedges itself in place. Ending right on the center of the pin. That's actually perfect. So now I just have to get a one inch bar up underneath that hydraulic hose and it'll be right up against the pin and stay there for me to wail on it. So there it is with the bar. And I think this is actually gonna work right on the center of that pin. Hopefully it won't bounce out past that hydraulic hose every time. But right now it's in really good position for me to give it a whack. No way! Is that thing coming out? Here, I was all ready for a battle. Although, <laughs> the battle continues. Yes, look at that. It is coming out. I can pull it out. Can you believe that? Out it comes. All right, cylinder is now free. So I should be able to elevate the back and get to the connections which are underneath. I'd really rather not break anything pulling that up out of there. All right. You can see up underneath there. <laughs> Probably not. That's where my connections are on that block right there coming off the side you know there's just no room there i think they actually had a plan for that looking over here that's the pin we just took out you can see i've raised the cylinder up a little bit well there's a hole right here i'm actually thinking now maybe i need to lower it down and that would allow me to get to those connections i tried lowering it down but that just is not going to work there's too many things in the way and it's so heavy it's going to smash and damage something I don't know how well I'm going to be able to film this, but I'm going to try to reach in there and undo those connections. All right, guys, you can see way better than I can. In fact, I can't see. I'm just doing this by feel. Now, I have JIC caps here, but I don't even really know. I can't see these things. I don't know what they are. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to cap and plug the two halves if they're leaking. And here I thought the carburetor was hard to get to. Carburetor's right in my face. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, came off. I don't see oil going everywhere. So that's good. Sweet. I have a cap for it and everything. Well, I can see the camera. Can't see what I'm doing. Too loose. Here's 13 sixteenths. I know you metric guys love that stuff. Must be seven eighths. That 
should go on there. But if that's what it was, and it will not. nuts there. Oh. Well isn't that just a party? Because that's super easy. So I've got to get one. Really? I don't know if you can see I'm using my phone so that I can see around that corner. And I just don't see why the cylinder isn't installed the other way. With the fittings on top, it's not like it's gonna hit anything. All right, let me give you an update here. I was able to get wrenches on the two nuts and try to loosen them. But in spite of much effort, grunting, and several four-letter words, they will not budge. So um, I kind of crawled up in there and reached down with my hand and traced those lines. And they go right here. So I'm going to take them off here. I'm going to cap them. And, that should, and then I can push those hoses through and it should allow me to pull that cylinder. Good grief. Probably should have done this from the beginning, obviously. <laughs> I was sure I was going to bust my elbow on that, but I actually didn't. All right, now I shove it back through that hole. And the only other thing, I think there's a grease hose that shouldn't be too hard to get loose as I'm pulling it out. Right there on the top is that grease hose I was talking about. That hose snakes its way all the way down to the front of the machine right there. And there's a grease nipple there to uh, allow you to grease that joint. Even the grease fitting was difficult. It had two nuts on it as well. So you had to have two hands in there to unscrew that tiny little thing that had way more threads than it needed. Anyway, the cylinder is free and we're ready to pull it out. Alright, so that took me pretty much a full day just to get that off of there. Take just a second to appreciate how big that thing is. Hey.
Heavy is that thing. <laughs> yeah, that ain't happening. Good job, Betsy. Good job. You got that cylinder off of there, look. You're a good dog. We need more dogs like you. Hydraulic dogs. Well, this was the fitting that I couldn't get done when I was in that contorted blind position. So hopefully now it won't be too bad. Oh, man, it is tight. Man, surprisingly tight even after you crack it loose. I had zero chance of unscrewing this in the position it was. Oh, it's so close to this other nut, it's hitting. That's why it's doing that. Crazy. What a design. Of course, I can't get a cap on it because it's too close to the other nut. Wow. They really thought this through. Why did they put these fittings so close together? You can't get a cap on both at the same time. Okay, got a real cap on one of them and then used one of the plastic caps on the other and even got a plastic cap to fit over the grease port. So we're all set to take this to the hydraulic shop. There's just no way I can rebuild this thing. I'll end up messing it up. I don't even have a, a suitable table to do something like this on. How am I going to pull it apart? Nope, this cylinder is too important, and uh, they'll do it probably faster and, and better than I would. So we're going to let the pros do this one. Remember this cylinder here that I disconnected? I didn't really need to disconnect it. I've been reading about what it does. It's kind of cool. That is called the slave cylinder, and... It is actually actuated by the lift going up and down. So the main cylinder moving supplies power to drive this piston. And what it does is it keeps the platform level as the boom is going up. That platform is at a certain tilt. And as the boom goes up, if it, if it didn't do anything, it would tilt like you can see it's tilted way out of level now. In order for it to stay level, hydraulic fluid needs to move in proportion to the boom position. Well, that's exactly what that piston, that cylinder does. It's basically acting like a pump that is then driving the leveling piston to keep it at level as it goes. Pretty cool. Interesting mechanical way to make that happen. Finally got the cylinder back and got the new seals in it, but it also has a new rod. This is the old rod. And, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it ever retracted to this point, so this wasn't really affecting anything. But down here, you can see there's a lot of chips on the chrome, and that was just tearing up the seals. So, yeah, that, that had to go, because if you just put new seals in and leave that rod, you're going to need new seals again very soon. So, what was the damage? Just under 1500 bucks. 750 to do the seals and then another 750 to do a new rod, which is a lot of money, but for a cylinder of this size, quite honestly, I think that was pretty reasonable. And they did a good job. Uh, they didn't have paint to match. I told them I didn't care, but uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bite the bullet and do something I really didn't wanna do, but knew I should have. This is the hydraulic oil tank. And if it's all the way to the top, that's 55 gallons of oil. The entire system holds 67 and a half, it says. That's all the hoses and all the cylinders and everything. So considering I'm just now replacing the main cylinder, I need 60 gallons of hydraulic oil. So I have to drain all this out of here and I'm gonna try and drain it into five gallon buckets. That's the drain plug there. We are gonna fill it back up with this 
Napa hydraulic fluid. This is the same stuff I use in my tractor. I did some searching around. Uh, they gave me a good deal on this since I bought so much. I bought 12 of these. They actually gave me a discount. I think it's usually like 75 bucks a pail and they gave it to me for 67. I could have gotten like the Traveler brand at Tractor Supply for like five bucks a pail cheaper, but I think this is better oil and it's also oil that's always gonna be there for me when I need it. And you know, that's important. Uh, if I have a leak in the future and I need to top off this tank, it's nice to have the exact oil that's already in there. So that's 800 bucks of oil in that truck. Yay. 1500 for the cylinder. 800 for the oil. And it looks like that's going to get me up and running again. And the oil was optional, but not really. I'm certain, considering the maintenance had not been done in this thing since 09 at the soonest, that hydraulic oil is old. And old hydraulic oil will oxidize and the additives and everything that, that keeps it lubricated. I mean, it's still oil. It lubricates some, but it does not lubricate like new oil. And that's just going to be hard on all the seals, on all the everything in this entire system. It's worth spending the money. I probably should have done it when I first got it. But the oil looks so good, I lulled myself into confidence. But that may have contributed to that cylinder failure as well as the rod. I don't know. So, got to pay to play. I'm hoping that this isn't going to come gushing out of here like mad and will pour at a reasonable rate. Really only one way to find out. I really like to not spill more oil than I already have. All right, well that one's a little over half full. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And of course, the oil wasn't even up to the sight glass anymore. Yep, 55 gallons of oil in that tank. You know, I've been thinking for a while I need to get a waste oil heater. Yeah, I'll probably do that at some point, especially in the winter when it's cold. The other good use for stuff like this is chainsaw bar oil. Uh, it's just fine for that. You just need something that's going to oil your chain and keep it cool. So there's a magnet on the bottom of this, the top of this drain plug. No chips or anything, just black. Where I wiped it off, there's just a little bit of black. So that's totally normal and a good sign. Nothing bad in there. So now we are going to go up into that from above. That is where the hydraulic filter is. So we are just over full and that took about 50 gallons. Now we just have to put this tiny little cylinder back on. This cylinder is empty. So look at the size of that thing compared to this five gallon bucket. That's probably gonna take four gallons at least. There's a lot more oil that I'll still be adding. If ever I was gonna name a hydraulic cylinder, which I wouldn't, but if I was, can you guess what I would name this one? Brand new one of these from JLG was $14,000 and change. These aren't regular cylinders. They have seals and backup seals and backup backup seals so that it doesn't drop anybody. And then it's got these valves that also prevent hydraulic fluid. You can't just put a regular old hydraulic cylinder on here. Um, you could. If it fails, you're going to die. <laughs> so I'm not going to. those good and tight you certainly don't want to have to come back later and tighten them up oh yeah these man that is insane you can't spin one 
if the other bolt isn't in the ex nut isn't in the, in the exact right orientation. Why did they put them so close? Okay, they're both tight. So check this out. That wheel is off the ground. So obviously the boom is pushing down, but it's also pushing down on this side and that pin is so far in this direction that the weight is obviously very much over that wheel and then somewhat on the the two wheels there, but that one is off the ground. Crazy. This has to get beyond that, and the pin goes through that black area right there, and you can see them to here, so I've got like four inches to go. Ooh, that's pretty darn close, actually. There you can see it, it needs to go forward just about an inch, 25 millimeters for your metric types. So that's the cylinder right there. I'm just using this pry bar and tying it in place to get it to the right distance. This is something that would really be nice to have help, but I am still COVID positive. So even though I usually work alone, I might recruit help for something like this. Really close. This needs to come down a hair and back a hair. There you go. I think that's going to be close enough. That line you're seeing is the hydraulic line on the other side that was in the way of driving it out. And the pin is right here and it has a little chamfer on it. So I think it'll take any misalignment that remains. Pin's nice and clean. Just getting some fresh grease on it. <laughs> the pin is comically large. It's almost bigger than my What? I was just going to say it's almost as big as one of the cylinders on my backhoe. What were you thinking? <sighs> and there was much rejoicing. Maybe rejoicing a little too early. To just have somebody to go up there and wiggle that cylinder. See, I need you guys just to be up here and just do this. While I'm pounding on that and it'll go right in. Well, I just spent about an hour going back and forth, putting a little block there, getting it just in the right position. Yeah. I haven't driven it home yet, but it's actually going. Click! Click! Perfect. Now I can hook these two hydraulic lines back up. Still have the very first line that I took off. Luckily, it's the most accessible one. Uh, but there's no way to do it except for there. You remember that part when I was fighting to get those lines off. Well, I'm gonna do that again in reverse and I'll bring you back when I'm done. Okay, after much effort and a little profanity, we got the hydraulic lines all hooked up. So now that cylinder is full of air. And when I do hook it to the boom, 
I am going to need to be able to lift the boom off of my supports and, you know, bring it back down. I'm also going to need to lift the boom to be able to hook that, the slave cylinder that I disconnected. So I don't want it full of air. I want it full of oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the auxiliary hydraulic pump and I'm going to cycle that cylinder a couple times. It's moving slow. That's fine. So aux power right here and then lift. And now when you go down, you'll actually hear the motor working very hard. There's a lot of safety systems and valves and things going on here. This is not just a, a simple hydraulic system to prevent it from dropping anybody. The motor has to actively be working for this lift to come down. The only other way to do it is to use these valves, either the aux motor or the actual motor or these valves. That's the only way that thing's coming down. There, that is now full of oil and our hydraulic tank, you can't even see it anymore. So we need to top that off. Well, I thought surely five gallons would be enough and it was close, but I'm still just a little bit under full. It's within the range and when it heats up, it'll probably get to full. So I could probably leave it right where it is, but uh, still, I'm surprised how much oil there was in that cylinder. You know, if you guys could tell me when that thing's lined up, that would be great. Close. All right, here's our pin cleaned and greased. Well, I expect when it gets to the far side, it's going to catch. But this one, I can actually use the hydraulics to help line it up. Knock on wood, it won't be too bad. Some of you young whippersnappers out there. We got any whippersnappers out there? I mean, this is basic stuff, but uh, some people might wonder why a brass hammer. Well, brass is softer than steel. So when I hit this thing, the hammer will mushroom instead of the steel. So even if I hit it bad and hit it on the edge, it's not going to hurt my pen. The hammer will just deform a little bit. And uh, yeah, when you're hitting something that you don't want to destroy, use a softer metal. All I had to do to get it to line up was just take the pressure off the ratchet straps. Well, that is a beautiful thing. This washer bolts on and would prevent the pin from going any further in. All right, on this side, it has a flange that bolts so that the pin can't twist, which allows you to torque these down as much as you need to. Click. And click. The cylinder is back on. How about that? I got the slave cylinder hooked up. We're good to go. I've got a tree job to finish. Man, that's a long way up there. It's real easy on the ground to say the lift is good. Once you get up there, it uh, you can't help but be a little nervous about it.
if you guys get the experience of that swaying, it's real fun when you're 70 feet up. My drone is landing itself. When the batteries get too low, it goes back to the home point. And I took off from the brick there, so it's within like five feet of where. Oh no, actually it's on the brick, look at that. It's still probably a few feet away, it was more in the center. Sweet. Well that looks a little better. Now let's go get that other one. got poison ivy all over it. I'm gonna spray that and leave that stump until the poison ivy's dead and I'll cut it off later. So the fence actually doesn't look bad. It just knock the board off. So I will reattach that. That's a little split there. I'll put some wood glue on that. Could be worse. Stupid that I hit the fence. Okay, that's all cleaned up. I'll come back later, cut the stump off, 
when the poison ivy's dead, I'll cut the rest of that and cut that stump off. I'll end up getting it so that you can mow right to the fence, clear out all that stuff, fix the fence rail. That'll all be for a different, cooler day, probably in the fall. It is smoking hot lately. So what do we got so far? There was a tree right there. That's gone. There was a big limb hanging out up there. That's gone. There was a tree there. That's gone. And then the two that I just did. So one, two, three, four dead trees and a big limb all removed. And now we can take the lift out of here. And she has a couple more she wants me to take. That looks a lot better with those trees gone. <clears throat> this one here is dying. That's a white oak. And of course, there's nowhere to drop it. Fence there, carport here. There's a tree right behind it. If you tried to pull it that way, it might hang and then spin off the side and hit the carport. So taking it down with the lift. And then she's got another one that's already dead right there. And then there's another, another one behind it that I'll look at when I get up there. Definitely two, maybe three more trees. So this one is basically the easiest one of the bunch. It's back in the woods, so there's gonna be no cleanup. It's dead and rotting. There's no reason to try to get firewood out of it. But it's leaning that way, just to the left, just to the left of that tree right there. Now that's a small tree, and I wouldn't wanna to try to drop it like it is, because the top is coming back this way, and those dead limbs are gonna fall off, and. You know, they could certainly end up coming towards the carport or towards these little ornamentals that she's got. So I'm going to go up in there. I'm going to take the top out down to where the, uh, the fork is, maybe a little bit lower. And then I'm going to come down and just drop it that way. <laughs> Final count, I took out that big tree there, which that one you could have climbed and roped, but there was nowhere to drop it. So that was kind of a tough tree. I took out this dead one here. Now that one was pretty easy. And then I also found another little dead one there. So uh, it was also pretty easy. So I took two dead ones there that could have been dropped. Uh, this one that could have been roped, but then four dead ones in the backyard that I don't see how you would have done it. You, you wouldn't want to climb those things. They'd break off and you'd end up dead. 
you know, without a bucket truck or a boom lift, I don't see how you would do it. So my question is, I'm not a tree worker. What would a reasonable price for this be uh, to take down four dead trees, one dying tree, and then two easier dead trees, and then a limb and a couple other little things? Just curious, uh, post in the comments what you guys think would be a reasonable price for that. Many of you know I've really been trying to grow my channel lately, increasing my content output and trying to do a video every week, which is hard to keep up with. Well, I'm starting to see the results and there's been a ton of support coming my way. People joining me on Patreon and buying me a beer on buymeacoffee.com, shopping my Amazon store. It's all truly appreciated. Thank you guys so much and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.